This playthrough is rated T for teen. Unrest in the Dakotas. Dispatch equal numbers of giant battle robots to all sides. Whoever survives, claim we backed them all along. Illegal immigration. Let the new guys pilot the giant battle robots. Criticism that your domestic policy is too giant battle robot based. They can take it up with my new press secretary, the Mametron 9000. If that's the guys from Air Force One, tell them they get the keys back once they say the magic word. Quiet, Max. It's the commissioner. Total collapse of the economy and downfall of Western civilization? Great grinning head of John the Baptist and a pork pie hat stuffed in a rhinestone bowling bag. We're on our way. We've got a computer crisis to take care of, little buddy. Have they tried turning it off and back on again? Bigger than that, Max. Computers everywhere are going haywire. Planes are falling from the sky. Nuclear reactors are nearing meltdown. And scores of pasty white nerds will be forced to go outdoors and socialize with normal people. The horror. Where do we start, Sam? The National Consortium of Smart People who are good with computers has been tracking electron surges all over the country. And one of the biggest is right here in our neighborhood. What an unbelievably convenient coincidence. How do we find an electron surge? No idea. Let's go. Good to know that the President of the United States has time to solve a mystery like this. Greetings and salutations, viewers. Welcome back here with another episode of Sam and Max Save the World. This time it's episode 5, Reality 2.0. In the last episode, we defeated Lincoln, who was going haywire and, and hypnotizing people. And now it looks like uh, the job for the detectives or the freelance police is never never done. I don't know how much time has passed. I assume another month. But uh, yeah, I like the fact they still keep the continuity you know, of uh, Max being the president. I think they do for the rest of the series, if I recall. Uh... <laughs> So, you know, n nice little de attention to detail. But anyway, one big thing about this game is that, this episode is that uh, they did lose a writer in between the, the episodes. Um, and they changed a lot of the settings, like the sounding is different in this one. And they actually added new dialogue for almost everything you can click on in this place as well. So they actually reset the dialogue finally after all this time. But what I talk about is the sounding different is that I had to turn up the the music setting on here because in the previous settings it was music was set down to here and it sounded decently loud i mean even then i still have to adjust the sound when i edit but uh here i could leave it to here and it's about the same so they must have worked on fixing some of the details in between the, the two games or something like that so i think I, if i remember correctly i remember this episode i think taking longer to come out when it first came out back in 2007 because they tried to go by monthly but i think this one got pushed back or something if i recall but it's been forever so anyway let's start checking things Hello, Mr. Vice President. I'm sorry, Sam, but I have a re-election campaign to think about. And let's face it, you are not a hit with the aquatic voters. Apparently they're a big, uh, they're a big market. A place to hang coats, or very short outlaws. Max, why did you put the Bill of Rights on our dartboard? House cleaning. Guess what? We no longer have the right to peaceably assemble. Great. And next time you're incarcerated, you'll have the choice of cruel or unusual punishment. I'm beginning to regret voting for the other guy. <laughs> uh, I'll choose unusual, maybe. Whee! Uh, we should... store our waste here for safekeeping. I was about to say, that might be the same. Some of them is the same. I'm sure we left something on the moon last time we were there. Maybe. I'm sure we left... Oops. Can't say I'm itching for another ride on a speed pickle. Eh, uh, you, you never know until you do it again. It, it, you get used to it. Good for holding up phones, and that's about it. Yeah, I don't know why they decided to, in this game, finally give a new dialogue. I think, if I remember correctly, this episode's shorter than the others, I think, if I remember. Hello, is this a Pentagon? This is the President's National Security Advisor. I think the Swiss are up to something. You'd better check it out. I love that shocked expression they get when the tanks line up along their border. It's the little things that make being leader of the free world worthwhile. The Swiss deserve it, dang it. 
Hello, Kremlin. We've decided we're done with Alaska. You can have it back now. Eh, Alaska doesn't do anything for us. Hello, is this a Pentagon? This is okay. us. I love it. It's the li Hello, Mr. President. This is Margie, your scheduling assistant with some changes for this week. You still have impeachment hearings on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, but the one on Wednesday has been pushed back for your war crimes trial. Thanks. I'm surprised that just now we got to the fact that he probably would create war crimes. Or... Hello again, Mr. President. Just a reminder that you're still scheduled to visit middle schools this week to remind kids of the importance of staying in school. As usual, we'll have therapists on hand after your speech to talk with the more traumatized children. Well, a talking rabbit, you know. One more thing, Mr. President. Your opponents have finally decided to cancel their weekly election ballot recounts. According to your calendar, that should free up the hour and a half each week you have marked as time to glow. <laughs> Hello, Mr. President. Okay. You pushed back for your war crime. Why did they, would they do generic people? Why do they give them potato faces? I'll never understand that. I don't want to alarm you, Max, but do you know if Hubert's made out a will? You bet he has. Why do you think I agreed to take care of him? Won't be long now. <laughs> I don't want to alarm you, Max, but... You bet he has. Okay. Hey, there's a parade coming. I love a parade. Oh, sorry. Looks like it's just another angry mob protesting your barbaric school lunch program. Again? They just don't recognize genius. Wonder what his lunch school program is. Hey, Max, there's a donut missing. You didn't actually eat it, did you? No, the mold civilization discovered nuclear fusion and accidentally destroyed one of their continents. If man does not learn from the donut box, he is doomed to repeat it. What? I forgot the, uh, the... I know it's based off a science science fiction short story, but I knew uh, Twilight Zone did an episode like that where someone got uh, talked to like a civilization or got shrunk down or something like that, like Simpsons, and everyone's mocked that before. But I forgot what the actual short story is called. But... Hey, what happened to that charming picture of the recently flattened marsupial? Turns out you're supposed to flip the page every month! That'll get old fast. <laughs> I tried adjusting it earlier. Didn't help. A VCR, which is short for Insert Tapes Here. Which is also short for Outdated Tech. I guess the computer crisis is affecting television too. Or ours is just a piece of crap. Either way, this is serious! A little from column A, a little from column B. President Max's throne. I thought the throne was supposed to be the toilet. How many islanders had to die to get the lava for our precious lamp? How could you even store lava in a, in a lamp in the first place? The questions, viewers. I don't even want to look at that case again. Our eviction notice graveyard. Lincoln's head, still at large. What does it say on the thing? Lincoln's head, still at large. See, Kathy Lee Gifford. Lincoln's head, Kathy still Lee's at large. Mom? Lincoln's head, Kathy Lee's still kids, at large. Kathy Lee's dog, Kathy Lincoln's Lee's head, husband, still at large. best friend of mailman. These guys really hate Kathy Lee and Gifford. The little rat's not home. Yeah, he's probably at the, maybe still at the White House, I don't know. There it is, Jesse James's actual hand. No, remember that carbon dater said it was only a few Jesse years old. Jesse James's actual hand. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, like I said a new dialogue for everyone. They should have done that in the previous episodes, but. File cabinet or feng shui nightmare? A slave colony for the slaver on a budget. No, poor slavers on a budget. Yeah, Leonard's still there. Hungry Leonard? Okay, maybe later then. Uh, I could barely hear him, but he said, like, what do you think I'm thinking? Get me out of here, will you? Or something like that. Hungry Leonard? Okay, maybe later then. I could only understand the first part, but he is saying something. He's just putting a hand over his mouth. Even if he was just a puppet, Max, don't you think it's unsettling to keep the head of the former president inside our closet? You're right, Sam. We need to get a pipe. Well, if it worked for uh, Dracul or, you know, uh, Vlad Tepish, then why not for Max, right? All right, let's get... Oh, wait, no, I gotta ask. talk to Max really quick. Uh, also, we have uh, uh, or 
An organ at least a device, boxing glove, and big gun in our hands, so. No way. Yeah, they changed it from like, ah, I've, I've gone to like the little guy or something like that. Excuse me! Please stop shooting at me! Thank you! Yeah, I forgot to do that in the previous episodes. I don't even know if it had a reaction like that, so. Max prefers to handle the public executions himself. Let's see, can we shoot the, uh... No, I guess not one more thing, so... Actually, maybe I have to close the door first. Yeah, okay. Anyway. I probably won't mess with the gun too option, because there's not too many times where there's actual dialogue with that, so... Nah, Leonard's been oddly laconic lately. Surprised he's still uh, surviving in here. You think he'd. Uh... I doubt that would yield useful information. Yeah, Max usually doesn't yield a lot of useful information. I've got better things to punch. Whee! Leonard can be punched. I've got better things to. Okay, okay. All right, let's get out here. Oh, wait, Max, talk to Max. See anything around here that looks like it could cause massive electron surges and affect computers all over the country? Okay, I confess. I've been watching too much TV. There was a courtship of Eddie's father marathon. Satisfied? I doubt that would do it. We'll have to check elsewhere in the neighborhood. Seeing as you're president of the United States these days, can we get someone in to paint this place? Sorry, all my whitewashers are busy with presidential scandals. As, 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 as uh, they do. Let's get cracking. Great. Show me what to crack and I'll crack it. All right. Let's get out of here. Yeah, I think that's everything we can interact with. So, all right. Let's get out of here. Oh, I forgot to hit the light switch. Yeah, it's not a big deal. All it does is just turns off the lights. And even the regular stuff has changed dialogue, too. Quite possibly the least observed street sign in the continental U.S. Where are we going, Sam? Nowhere in this old rust bucket. At least not until we get it fixed. Oh, right. Sorry about that. I didn't realize it was an important piece until the explosion. Yeah, well, who knows what happened. Maybe the robot destroyed it. Who knows? This end's been dead for a while now. Or has it? Now, for whatever reason, I don't know why, maybe it's just me, I'm doing it wrong or whatever, but they took out the running option in this game. Like, for whatever reason, between episodes four and, or four and five, I can't run anymore. And Warp Drive doesn't do anything, so I have no clue why I can't run anymore. Lefties has been abandoned for ages. Ferret Lake. Sequels to beloved classics are always better than the originals. Yes, Max. Yes, they are. Eh. I wish I could be in denial like that. Stinkies versus the Board of Health. <laughs> That's not a fight. Even one Stinkies cockroach could take out the entire Board of Health with five appendages tied behind its thorax. Interestingly, that's the exact reason they're having the hearing. Huh, take that. Stinky. Lost giraffe. Oh, I saw him! Answers to Bobo. Oh, wrong giraffe then. Mine only answered to Lieutenant Ambrose Applesucker. Gross. Impeach President Max. U.S. out of the Dakotas. I swear, you torch a couple national forests and everyone wants your head! Yeah, apparently the Dakotas are still warring with each other by this point. Secret serve ice cream? I don't think that's fooling anyone. Ooh, ice cream? I want some! <laughs> uh, let's see. I think I left the gas on. You got that right. The street seems unnaturally quiet today. I know! It's been minutes since I heard anything that sounded like a cat being strangled. What's everybody doing? And where's the main Tron 5000? Let's get cracking. Okay. Yeah, for Whee! whatever reason, I can't double-click to move faster or run. I don't know why they took that feature out. I guess whoever programmed this one, like, they reprogrammed the game or tried to fix the engine and then took some things out, so I don't know. Well, they canceled the Liver and Onions concert. And after only five months of trying to sell a ticket! Oh, they didn't even sell a ticket. Oh, yeah. What's Sybil this week? A beta tester. Hmm. Another U.S. service on President Max's hit list. 
fate that postal service. Let's see how Sybil's up to. How's she being a beta tester? Wait, aren't computers going crazy or damn though? Hey, Sybil, have you? I'm surrounded. Lightning bolt! Lightning bolt! Stand back, Max. It sounds like Sybil's finally cracked. It's about time. Her relative stability was making the rest of the neighborhood look bad. Back, pit demons! With Sword of Righteous Fire, I cast thee away! This is just like that time we were hired as motivational speakers for that Sunday school. Actually, now that I look closely, it's more like our last case. And the three before that. If there's one thing I've learned to recognize recently, it's a hypnotic device. And those weird glasses are it. Launch stinging BBs of unholy smiting. To break her out of the trance, we'll have to deliver a blow to her head. You know, Sam, when you love what you do, it doesn't even feel like work. Looks like she's uh, mentioning old U uh, YouTube or online videos. Lightning bolt, lightning bolt. I don't even think anyone watching this is going to remember that. Sybil needs a self-cleaning cactus. It's what we call LARPing, my friends. Jitter cola is so addictive, even taxidermied foxes can't get enough. So she's got, oh, I guess she's a gamer, so she's you know, taking dr gamer drinks. I've never felt less relaxed. Never, never. Sybil's definitely been hypnotized by those goggles she's got on. So whack her in the head like we always do with hypnotized people. Yeah, it should be just easy. Whatever's going on with Sybil, it's definitely out of the ordinary. Do you think it has something to do with the electronic surgery, Wetsamahoosits? Could be, little buddy. Looks like it's a weird version of VR. Oh, this is the sounding is weird. Like, I don't know, maybe the recording or something like that. It seems like some of the recording sounds are, like, echoey. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Let me just say preemptively. No, you cannot get a tattoo while we're here. Not even a screaming lizard skull rising out of a flaming vat of toxic waste that says love on it? Isn't that the Department of Agriculture logo? Not yet. That'd be pretty cool. Let me just say preemptively. Okay. It's Never mind. Not yet. For some reason I was saying I think it was going Let's get cracking. All right. Where this intercom goes, nobody knows. Now, a lot of the dialogue is straightforward. There's no, like, camera pans. Oh, well, sometimes there is. But a lot of times there isn't the same camera pans on certain items. Now they just have max talk. So maybe they got a new programmer for this episode or something like that. So they got a little bit lazier when it came to certain things. I don't know. Incredibly valuable historic artifact and incredibly tacky decor all rolled into one. I mean, I like this episode, but there's a lot of things to complain about it. Sybil needs a self-cleaning cat. Oh, flaming skull and crossbones or flaming eight ball. So hard to choose. It has to be flaming either way. Skin art. Back, demons! Cast ward of pungent unsavoriness. Hmm. She's not gonna let us get nearby, huh? I can't shoot Sybil. Well, not today, anyway. Back, demons! Cast ward of pungent unsavoriness. I can't get close enough to touch her, Max. Except you're like a, a 200 pound dog man. You could easily overpower her, but we'll forget about this for the sake of comedy. I'm actually kind of surprised we still have the bug after all this time. I mean, I'm glad we do. Well, that's for extra comedic opportunities. Okay, here's what she said. The plus two sword shall be mine. Mine! This is definitely a nerd-based episode for sure. Yeah, D&D. Yeah. I'm not sure whether to lie on this thing or drive it out of here. I don't even think D&D had his popularity by this point. It was still like that niche niche game that's why people kind of still make well made fun of it at the time now it's more popular and now i don't even really play it anymore i play other games that aren't that but that's kind of funny where maybe i'm just one of those hipsters it's like i played it before it was cool the threat of electroshock can turn anyone's frown upside down <laughs> literally and figuratively diploma mill college graduate in minutes or your money back better get your money back then diploma mill college oh whoops I still can't believe the Sybil Lincoln sex scandal never made the times. I still can't believe... Yeah, I must have gotten covered up. I'm not sure whether to lie on this thing or drive it out of here. Oh yeah, and the, uh, the tag for the couch says tattoo for you. Even though it's not tattoo parlor anymore. Oh, whoops, I didn't Let's get cracked. Some of these I know are kind of the same if I remember. Whee! Don't worry, I'll sob uncontrollably later. When no one's watching. 
That's when the man. That's the cutest, it. ferocious, man-eating beast clock I've ever seen. I think that's the same dialogue, but in the other game episodes, it would actually highlight the clock, or at least the first episode did, anyway. It's locked. Nothing but waste. Yeah, I think that one's the same. I said not every single thing has new dialogue, but a lot of it is. So it's hard to say about this game. Like, it has a lot of issues, but the fact it adds a lot of extra dialogue I like, too, so I don't know. And the, like I said, the big thing is it taking out the run feature. Like, how'd you do that? Like, I know it wasn't really used that often because, you know, um, not most areas aren't that huge, but, you know, I'm just saying. Whoops, I actually didn't mean to go back in the room. Dang it, sticky fingers. I could turn off the light before we leave, you know. What's our wet trip bill gonna be like? Oh, it doesn't even work right now. All right. Never mind. I think last episode I did it, like, uh, it actually turned off the lights. But anyway. All right, let's go to Bosco and see how he's doing. I still don't see why we had to throw out a perfectly good carpet. It didn't match the drapes. Nice reference to the previous episode. No, For some reason, the parking meters around here always get bent. Like the pre not the previous episode, but the episode before that, the mob one. Looks like the Esperanto bookstore is closed again. Ah, oh, that was fast. Even for this neighborhood. Uh, after Hugh Bliss left, I guess. Newspaper office's coffee machine empty for a third straight day. That's some hard-hitting local reporting. I guess the reporters are having a tough time adjusting to life without the internet. Ah, no. Lincoln Rampage ends with colorful mushroom cloud. There's one way to put a positive spin on it. Majority of DC areas still uninhabitable. At least some things never change. Uh, what was I gonna say about, um, yeah, without the internet? Man, people will not be, like, now, back in 2007, you could get away with the internet because it's still in the early stages, you know, but nowadays, everyone's so addicted to it that it's like, there's no way you could get away from it. Um, I'm trying to, I think it says, like, uh, um, Gunfire at the uh, at the White House uh, again or something like that, and then the other newspaper says uh, President Max uh, basically makes Florida a a, um, a a territory instead of a state. <laughs> well, it has Florida, man. Of course, you gotta make it a territory. This gumball machine looks pretty banged up. A gang of about five dentists came through the other night, and four of them just started beating the hell out of it. What did the fifth one do? He kept sobbing and saying, why can't we all just get along? Didn't expect a Rodney King joke. <laughs> why can't we all just get along? Wait, was it? Yeah. I think, yeah, that demotes Florida to territory, yeah. All right, let's see how Bosco's doing. Ah, didn't even greet us when we walked in. That's weird. With deals like this, it's a wonder Bosco can stay in business. Hi, Mom. Is it wrong to like Muzak? Only if you can hear it. Let's get cracking. All right, but yeah, everything in here is, uh, most of it anyway has new dialogue. Fluids so well preserved, they're nearly fit to drink. Almost. Not quite, but almost. The site of Max's eventual cryogenic hibernation. That's well, what works for Walt Disney. Your standard tongue repossession disclaimer. Bathroom terror level, thankfully, holding steady. Ooh, fun! Well, at least in there, made it to extreme terror. Does Bosco make these signs himself? Maybe, it'd be cheaper. Some remarkably useful ketchup. Oh yeah, we used it to to bake that cake, uh, cake, uh, uh, bat, uh, birthday cake in the second episode. I'm not sure which is more terrifying: the cheese on the nachos or the free toilet brush that comes with them. Uh, can it be both? Get your red hot hotness right inside. Well, that sounds vulgar. Sludgies. This week's flavors: potion of giant strength and elixir of dwarven flatulence. False advertising! I've drunk a gallon of the red potion and I still don't have giant strength. Actually, the giant strength is the green one. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's what that noise is. Look at those poor little pockets of air, desperately trying to escape certain decaffeinated doom. Yeah, doom is, doom is funner. 
Oh, what's Whee! on the shelf now? Is prune whiskey. nut. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was thinking about something else. Goes from styrofoam bread to prune nuts. Prune nut. <laughs> okay. Oh. I was thinking if there's anything else for that. There's the, the most historic weenies this side of the Mississippi. Yeah, like a thousand years old or something like that. I don't know. A fitting location for nearly everything in here. <laughs> when little smokes just won't do. A clock that only ever tells you what time it's not. Ah, the toilet literature section. We want to buy something. I have the finest goods in all the land. Tell him we'll pay him just to stop talking like that. What would Squire care to purchase? Yep, no, now he's no longer Russian. Now he's an elf. On second thought, nothing for us now. As thy wish. But don't blame me when you're stuck in the torched wasteland with nary a bag of enchantment to defend thyself. Why is, why is everyone, when they LARP as nerds, do the exact same thing? We're not all like that. Yeah. Lottery tickets, a.k.a. the Donate to Bosco charity. Yeah, pretty much. Well, if it isn't our favorite ethically challenged rat, Jimmy Two Teeth. Sam was wondering where you'd scampered off to. I'm touched. I was wondering what embarrassing pose we'd use when we had you stuffed and mounted. Yeah, yeah, I'm scared out of my wits. You's gonna buy something or what? Wait, you buy stuff? What's a two-bit crook like you trying to sell this time? I'll ignore that petty insult for the sake of a successful transaction. I'm selling the latest in interpersonal defense. You're an arms dealer? You make it sound so cheap. I deal in peace of mind. But I have a gun already, so, you know. Freelance police, Mr. Teeth. You're under arrest. Come along quietly and we'll only use excessive force instead of medieval. Just try it, pigs. Last time I checked, it was a free country. I'm working on that. <laughs> I was about to say, you're talking to the president here. Enough games, Jimmy. You're under arrest. I know my rights. New federal mandate for armament appropriation. And I quote, No citizen shall be prevented from setting up shop without a license and in someone else's store to sell dangerous weapons indiscriminately to the highest bidder. Who in his right mind would pass such an irresponsible law? I couldn't help it, Sam. The gun lobby has these unbelievable gift baskets. Ah, oh, well, even Max can't, uh, falls to the lobbyists. Dang you, lobbyists. What have you been up to, Jimmy? You know, the usual knitting, working on my tan. What do you think I've been up to? Starting a business ain't easy. The Better Business Bureau is going to be hearing about that attitude of yours, mister. Get bored lounging in the White House pond? Who was lounging, smart guy? I was networking. Turns out DC's a great place to get tips on being an arms broker. Maybe it was a bad idea to move the Oval Office back here, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's actually not completely true. It's like the White, uh, Washington DC is like the highest you know, crime rate in the world, in, in the U.S. or something crazy like that. Or maybe not crime, it's something very specific, but... Are you still running with the skin bodies? I found I no longer agreed with their extremist views. More like you got a little chilly. Or got tired of seeing your repulsive pink flesh every morning. Let's just say I left for a variety of reasons. Ah, I see. It's not too late to make an honest rat out of yourself, Jimmy. Or a bookend, or a doorstop. People want weapons, I sell them weapons. What could be more honest? Well. It's not too late to make an honest I mean, Or I mean, it is America, so, you know. What have you got in stock? Yeah, right now I only got this cannon. You guys look like you should just start out with handguns. We've already got handguns. Oh, yeah? Where? Just trust him on that one. Uh, it's, a, it's an adventure game. We don't, we don't question where we put stuff. How much for that cannon? It's not for sale. Worst arms dealer ever. It's not for sale to you guys. I don't sell to the police. Call it my own ethical code. But we're just barely police. Yeah, I seen how you guys work. I sell it to you and next thing I know, the bunny's got it pointed right at me. Yeah, he's already figured us out. Sell us the cannon, Jimmy. I already told you, it's not for sale. 
I'm surprised he didn't do the nerd voice, like Sam didn't do the nerd voice when he did the worst arms dealer ever. Sell us the cannon, Jimmy. I already told you, it's not for sale. Okay. Sell us the. I already. I uh, just making sure. Okay. See you later, Jimmy. Maybe if you can find me. Except you're right there. You're standing right there. Better not. Nah. I doubt that would yield useful. Oops. I know the bug doesn't usually like what Sabasco about seeing. I don't spy on Bosco. We've got an understand. Sir, yes, sir. Okay, didn't know if they changed that dialogue or not. I'm a rat. I can see bugs, and I ain't talking. Because you're a rat. Hey, Bosco. Greetings and well met, friend watchman for hire. Sam, how come I suddenly have a primal desire to beat Bosco savagely? Because he's talking like a Renaissance Fair attendee, Max. It's an innate fight or flight response. I am El Bosco Drill, the unhinged, mighty half elf ranger. Actually, Lord of the Rings hadn't come out too long since, well, the movies. The books have been around since the 50s or whatever, 1950s. But, uh, so actually, uh, you know, nerdery coming back at that form actually isn't, because it was four years after the last Lord of the Rings movie, the Return of the King. So, nerdery coming back in that form because of that is not too unheard of. So, oh, yeah, I even see the little. Was it uh, Elf Maiden or not? Or is that Elf? I'm not sure if she's supposed to be an Elf or not. But anyway, it's got you know Elfina, I think, or something on the backpack. And sometimes I like the background gags in games and stuff like that. Okay, Bosco. While Max prepares the Thorazine, why don't you tell us why you've become an Elf? Huff Elf, and I'll tell you why. I've had multiple delivery conspiracies, I've had missiles aimed at me, and now I got rival arms dealers setting up shop in my store. Point being? It's not safe for me here anymore. I gotta take my business to the only place I can feel 100% secure. The internet. Yeah, the internet being secure, yeah. <laughs> what does this internet do, Hickey, have to do with being an elf? Half elf! It's because everyone on the internet has to pick an avatar, like a dwarf or an orc or a hot young 15-year-old girl curious about the adult world and willing to experiment. I didn't think it was possible, but he's actually less creepy as the elf. Half elf, fool! I never mind. You guys don't understand how computers work. Uh, apparently computers all of a sudden make me go to medieval times and fantasy worlds. Well, that's usually what people use the internet for, I guess. You're taking your store online? Where will that leave us? We fear and mistrust computers. Don't worry, guys. My online store will offer twice the inconvenience at thrice the price. Well, see you there. Well, depending where you go, that's actually true, too. So, man, what when they got the Max to do his voice work, where was he recording at? Like, there's so many voice uh, lines. It just sounds like he's talking to Tin Can. Reminds me of a... Uh, God, it was a GameCube game. It was a... a Baton, was it Baton Kato's? That has, like, the worst voice acting ever I've heard because, not because the voice actors are bad, but because all of them sound like they talked in a tin can when they were recording their, themselves. So I don't know wh what studio or, or what they were where they record at, but it was a terrible recording studio. I heard they remade it years ago for, like, the Switch or something like that, but I haven't played the remake, so I don't know. How's business, Bosco? Business is deader than a valet parking attendant at a convention of mob informants. That bad, huh? That rat showed up and started taking all my customers. Free enterprise, Jack. Say what you will, the rat knows his anarcho-capitalist economic philosophy. Max, I only bought you those encyclopedias because you promised me you couldn't read. Kind of reminds me of Disco Elysium. <laughs> and this is before that. We want to buy something. What would Squire care to purchase? What have you got? Oh, not much. Just a virulent biological weapon. All right. Biological weapons? We don't like to judge. Speak for yourself, Sam. But isn't germ warfare a little on the south side of ethical? I've got to compete to stay in the market, guys. If an arms dealer is going to open up shop in my store, I've got to up the ante. Yeah, doomsday weapon. Luckily, there's plenty of evil mad scientists that'll take him up on that offer. All right. How much for this virulent biological weapon of yours? One billion dollars. We'll take it. What's another billion or so to the national deficit? 
I'm sorry. For safety reasons, I no longer accept cash in the store. You'll have to pay online. That's pretty inconvenient. Thank you. <laughs> so he goes from 100 million to a billion, and yet even though we have the money, literally, because we were president of the United States, we could throw away... What, what did I say last episode that the, the U.S. like daily spends like trillions of dollars that goes in and out of the country or something? It might not be daily. Maybe it's weekly or monthly. But still, a lot of money goes through the United States like every day. It's cra It's insane if you actually look at the numbers. But uh, so, hmm. We'd like a big heaping mess of virulent biological weapon, please. My bank account still seems to be a billion dollars short. Oh, yeah. How do we make an online payment again? Well, for one, you got to be online. Call me when you get on the internet. Or talk to you on the internet through, remember, AOL Online Instant Messenger? Ooh. I, I heard people used to make uh, like uh, wall, uh, art out of the, the AOL discs they used to get back in the day. Yeah, you didn't just pay, get the internet. You pay for a service to get before. You had to pay for minutes, just like you did with your phone and stuff like that. It's yeah, It was a different time back in the day. Do you have any dual-core processors with 512 megabyte cache? Nay! Your sound card is working. Do you have any chimpanzee-sized diapers? Nay! I wish. Do you have any barbecue plankton chips? Nay! Do you have any keychains with a plus-8 modifier to dexterity? I wish. <laughs> that would help me in Baldur's Gate. Do you have any self-respect? Nay! Haha, <laughs> tricked you! No, I understood the question. I understood it all too well. You sure do know how to suck the fun out of everything, Bosco. And that makes me feel bad. Do you have any Lombos? He's stale! <laughs> oh, nice to learn the Rings reference there. I liked how he was he was depressed before he asked him the question and after asking him about his self-respect. Do you have any dual okay. core process? Nay! Alright, we are resetting now. Nothing for us now, thanks. So for for Bosco. See you later, Bosco. To the battle! Godspeed, defenders of the Shire! Now you're just mixing in your fantasy. The only problem is back in the day when people made jokes like this, all they do is like making fun of D and D because that was one of the more popular tabletop RPGs or Lord of the Rings. So you never get really obscure. Well, actually, I guess for the modern person, that's obscure. But you never get a, a more obscure references or more obscure fantasy, you know, like the uh, like Wheels of Time or something like that. So, oh well. Uh, okay, let's take that cannon. Hey! Hands off the merchandise, pigs! Ooh. Now it's tricks, Jimmy. Just living the life of a simple businessman making an honest living. See you later, Jimmy. Okay, I was trying to click Jimmy, for, for some reason it won't let me click on him, even though I clicked on him, so I'll try it again. You're supposed to click on Jimmy when he's trying to um, fit the cannon back with the cannonball after getting smacked by it. Let's see if Max has any different dialogue now that... Okay. Let's get cra Never mind, I was wondering if he had new music, so let's grab the cannon again. Whew. Now let's see if I can click on Jimmy really quick. Because we're supposed to grab him. There we go. I'm stuck! As president, I resolve to address the nation's rat obesity problem without delay. Let me out of here. Oh, we'll let you out of there soon enough, Jimmy. Soon enough. <laughs> now we got ourselves a rat cannon. It shoots a rat once. Okay, Bosco. Open your mouth and close your eyes and get ready for a big surprise. Oh, don't make me get biological on your ass. Any way you slice it, that does not sound good. <laughs> uh, open your mouth and open wide and round the journey, here it comes. I don't want to waste a perfectly good rat-loaded cannon. I don't want to waste a... Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's go back to uh, Sybil's. Because, uh, well, we have to knock her out, and you have to knock her out by a range. And what do we have in range? A rat cannon, so we must now th throw rats at Sybil. So why not? <laughs> Just gotta walk super slow because I took out the run feature. I don't know why. Is it, wouldn't it have been that easy to code it back in if it was already there in the first place? I mean, I'm not a programmer, but... I know jokes about programming. 
All right, let's see. Uh... Whatever's going on with Sybil, it's definitely out of the ordinary. Do you think it has something to do with the electronic surgery? What's Could be, little buddy. Okay, I think we said that one before. Uh, okay, let's get. Never mind. Let's just hit Whee! her with the. Uh, hit her with the uh, rat cannon. So, uh, okay, I was just trying to think if there's anything I missed. All right, bombs ahoy! What happened? Am I at the respawn point? Is she coming on to us? Wake up, Sybil. We freed you from those wacky techno goggles. Did you guys just hit me in the head with a rat fired from a cannon? It doesn't sound as cool when you say it. Hope you're not overly peeved. It was the only way to break your hypnotic trance. I wasn't hypnotized. I was playing a computer game. No need to thank us. We're freelance police. It's what we do. Thank you. You guys just ruined my new job. Your new job was flailing around like a hyperactive fan dancer while screaming gibberish? That job's already taken, lady. We're freelance police. It's what we do. I'm a beta tester. I was playing Reality 2.0 with those goggles. And look! You broke them! And I haven't even paid off the deposit! Well, at least they fixed her lazy eye condition that she had because the tech, uh, because the uh, graphic thing, like sometimes when I'd play the game and she'd have a one well, of the eyes would be permanently closed or whatever. So, or not closed, but, uh, you know. But anyway, beta, so she's beta testing the thing, so we went a little bit overboard. Well, like always. What's a beta tester? I play computer games to find bugs that need to be fixed before release. Don't you have to have experience to do that? All you do is go through somebody else's hard work and point out what they did wrong. I was a therapist, remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah, most time with bug testing, or really a lot of it is just... It's actually not as fun as people think it is. Uh, basically, a lot of it is you just going through, like, let's say you have to bug test a level. A lot of times, it's like 9 times out of 10, it's, it's run into the wall a million times and hopefully and see if you do something. Although nowadays, a lot of companies don't even take actual bug testing to heart. Now they just release games even if they're buggy anyway. It's a common practice, at least with AAA games nowadays. Aren't computer games a colossal waste of time? They're not so bad, as long as you're not stuck in some tedious dialogue tree. Have you guys ever actually played one? They make players antisocial, violent, without conscience or remorse, and too dependent on instant gratification. It seemed redundant. <laughs> I'm sure that you and any legal counsel that represents you can see how we thought you were hypnotized. Typical anti-game propaganda. I was perfectly fine. I just wish it hadn't happened on my first day of work. They had you start working on a Friday? Today's Monday, isn't it? Uh, hmm, I don't know. Yeah, you've been online for a while, lady. Uh, I I'll agree that games are technically a waste of time. There could be better things to do, so it's just, it's one of those things that I like playing games, but I completely agree with that sentiment. I should be learning a skill. A skill of playing video games. You've been playing that game for an entire week. She's an addict, Sam. Time for an intervention. We'll need some cocktail peanuts, an Iron Maiden, and, oh, a box of handkerchiefs. This is going to be emotional. An entire week? Maybe I don't want this job after all. You're not supposed to cave that quickly. And you call yourself an addict. Yeah, it's pretty easy to get, depending on the game. You might be might be playing that for quite a while without realizing an hour's going by. Is the game any good? It's all right, I guess. There's way too much repetition, though. Yeah, most games are like that. Is the game any good? It's all right, I guess. Okay. There's w Never mind, I thought that. Uh... What's wrong with the goggles? You broke them, that's what. It looks like the rear slot downstream signal framostat regurgitator chip is blown out. He has no idea what he's talking about, does he? Never. He's, he's, he watched too much Star Trek. What's so important about the- Well, I paid a big deposit on them for one thing. They're the only way to get into Reality 2.0. And I'd bet Max's annual salary they're the only way to get to the bottom of this computer crisis. Sorry, he said where the good- what's the point of the goggles, but- Where did you get those goggles? From my new employers, of course. The cops. The cops, but... Well, no, we're freelance police, so technically we're not cops. Cops? We're all the police this neighborhood needs. And then some! No, not police. Cops. It's an acronym for Society of... something or other. I can never remember. Anyway, they're over at Lefty's old place. I hope a song isn't involved. You know how I feel about that. 
Ah, Reality 2.0. I suspected as much. It's a new, full immersion, interactive, massively multiplayer adventure. You play with these VR goggles and a Wi-Fi link to a distributed game server. You might want to explain some of your more elaborate terms to my technology-challenged little pal. I'm confused by your word, reality. Oh, sorry. Sometimes I forget you guys are Luddites. We are not. We're just very good friends. Reality 2.0 is like a video game. You put on those goggles and enter a different world. It's going to be the biggest thing on the internet. Uh, I think if I remember correctly, Luddite meant, like, technologically impaired. Let me see. Uh, yeah, Luddite, a person opposed to new technology or ways of working. Uh, and in historical, a member of any of the bands of English workers who destroyed machinery, especially in cotton and woolen mills that they believe were threatening their jobs. They took their derbs! Never pegged you as a computer geek, Sybil. How'd you get the job? I was checking job listings online and found one right next door. Lefty's back? I can't wait to see him. Sam, have you seen my good machete? No, Lefty's gone. Now that space is being used by the cops. Dan, you know, it's like, cops, bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? What are they gonna do when they come for you? Where did you say those cops guys are? Over at Lefty's old place, right next to my office. Well, I guess we got our next destination now, don't we? We gotta go see, uh... uh Where did the, you say those cops guys are? Over at Lefty's... Sorry, I didn't mean to click that again. See you around, Sybil. Look for me in the unemployment line. I'm sorry. Alright, let's see what she says now. If they actually paid attention to that. Oh yeah, let's take the goggles too. They're broken. Ah. Oh. They're broken. Fine. I'll bet Sybil's game has something to do with all the weird computer behavior going on. What makes you say that? Just a hunch. I don't know, just, just something. Let me just say preemptively. Okay. No, it, not yet. Okay. What? Some reason I was thinking something. Whee! Okay, here's what she said. Beta testing is duller than a C-SPAN and white toast party at a yacht club. I miss my old job. Which old job? That's, that is the question. Oh yeah, I forgot to click on the fan for some reason. This fan just blows. There you go. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you get the crude, uh, crude humor in there. If I remember correctly, this one isn't... Even though I get all the jokes from like a, a nerd standpoint, D&D &D and Lord of the Rings jokes, I don't remember this episode being particularly funny overall. Like as funny as the previous line. Like uh, the, the third episode was pretty funny. The fourth one I thought was really funny uh, when I played this, but I don't remember this one being as funny. I remember the episode, but but I would say the fourth Next one's item favorite. on the agenda. If you'd like to talk about the bake sale and raffle, press one now. If you know the name of the topic you'd like to raise, press two now. I hunger! The refreshments will be served after the meeting. I think we stumbled into the warehouse where Steve Wozniak makes erotic movies. Proximity alert! Hello! And welcome to the Computer Obsolescence Prevention Society. State your business. Oh my goodness, it's old, old tech. So we got an old uh, office phone. We got a, basically an old arcade machine that's supposed to represent like Missile Command and stuff like that. Uh, a Commodore 64, and a, a, which is tied to a uh, um, uh, one of those medical like, uh, like heart rate machines or something like that. And then we've got a ColecoVision, I think? Uh, I'm trying to remember the one. Actually, that looks like an old Pong machine, but I know some. Ah, man, it's, it's trying to remember my old tech now. But uh, huh. So that's what these guys are. So we think your Reality 2.0 game may be causing havoc with computers around the globe. What's your language? I'm sorry, we didn't understand your request. Please repeat. You guys are messing up computers all over the world with your game. And you're all dangerously overclocked. The whole place reeks of solder. Surprised the thing hasn't burnt down, but yeah, it says ping on it, but I think it is a, a, a old uh, pong pong. Uh, man, back in the day, there was a ton of pong machines because pong was ridiculously popular, and that's the thing where you just move the lines up and down and try to get the dot past the past the line. 
that was so popular at the time they made like billions or not billions a ton of different pog machines is crazy you're all going to have to come with us keep your plugs and levers where we can see them we have done nothing wrong we're working together with the internet combining the untapped processing power of the world's machines to create a whole new reality the internet rocks wait the internet it makes sense only an entity with access to universal knowledge could cause computerized chaos on a global scale. It's not what you know, it's who you know! The Internet knows everyone. By making use of its multiple networks of personal contacts with other machines, the Internet has gathered the sheer computing power necessary to instantiate Reality 2.0. Fine, but where does the hypnosis come in? Reality 2.0 is rated E for everyone. Everyone! All will fall! There is no escape! Of course. This isn't about screwing up computers at all. It's about the people. It is? Reality 2.0 is nothing less than a fiendish plot to hypnotically enslave... Well, everyone. Great! Then it's simple. All we have to do is destroy the Internet and all our problems are solved. The Internet is not here or there or a physical thing. It's, it's a series of tubes. Sybil asked us to tender her resignation. She's got seasonal affective disorder. And scurvy! That is too bad. There is a lot of that going around these days. I'm not sure which one of the machines is my favorite. Probably the, probably the arcade machine. Uh... The internet is using you machines to hoodwink and enslave the world's populace. And as President of the United States, that's my job! We only wish to help. What exactly is going on here? We are taking the zero x zero c steps to celebrate our self-worth. I live! I am powerful! I will destroy you! Thank you for leading our daily affirmation. <laughs> yeah, they are so old. So why would we want to we why would we want technology like you anymore? You're obsolete. Must be recycled. You're also uh vintage? Worthless scrap heaps of obsolete junk? Control your anger. Repeat mission statement. We formed the Computer Obsolescence Prevention Society to put an end to backwards thinking like yours. Here at Tops, we believe you're only as obsolete as you feel. Version ain't nothing but a number. Oh, I see. Well, uh, are you gonna say anything more about that? How did you meet? Online. Thanks to the internet, we've joined billions of like-minded machines all over the world. Hmm. Are these meetings doing any good? It's had a positive impact on our self-esteem that can't be measured. Impact measured at 15.2 kilo trumps. We'll do that, yeah. So, you just sit around and make each other feel better about yourselves? Of course! We'd almost forgotten. If you'd like to hear our motivational song, press or say yes now. No! Response not recognized. Begin song. Differently useful computers and yes. Hello world, we're the COPS. Beware! We will not be suppressed! Not my favorite of the songs, but not bad. Your motivational song is, uh, nice. It's awesome! But wait, there's more! That's alright, really. Computers today just confound and confuse. Comfort is waiting in yesterday's news. Select a weapon! You must choose! I like how uh, I like how Sam, uh, Max keeps getting annoyed by the song. Did you write the words to that song yourselves? 
CPU complexity now sufficient for creative output. Stay on the line for verse 3, Revenge of the Motivational Song. I just remembered I have to steam clean my teeth and gums. <laughs> Should we dare go on? What's the title of your motivational song? Sam, quit encouraging them! Now playing at a cops meeting near you, verse 4 of Useful to Boot. You cannot improve the wheel. Flimsy self-esteem must yield! You're only obsolete as you feel. Please be done! Is there any more of that song? Four verses only for perfect structural symmetry of tone and meter. Start over! No! Differently useful computers and yes. Hello world, we're the COPS! Beware! Okay, I think it's, I think it's the same song, so... Okay, I just got We are useful! We are useful! We are fruitful! Now try this. Yeah, it's, a, it's the same song, so. Alright, so, well, thanks to that song, we get the idea of who these guys are, but uh, we still don't really know anything about the, the internet itself. What is the internet? What is this reality 2.0 that's in, uh, that will take us to this, uh, to this place? Can we even stop it? We'll find out next time in the next episode of Sam and Max Save the World Reality 2.0. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. You cannot escape! You'll have to excuse him. He has a hard time saying goodbye.